wrong is just wrong. You know it when you see it. But it's by Toni Morrison. She won a Nobel Prize for literature. We know better. But it's hard to know what to do. Easier to let it go. So you just kick the can down the road. Hi again, everyone. We'll explain. It's 5 o'clock in New York. Kicking the can down the road. An easy, easier, but dangerous thing to do. As the extremists in our country and in our politics are getting more organized, more energized, more vocal, and yes, more violent. That's the message of a brand new video put out by the bipartisan group Mission Democracy. Their goal is to publicly call out MAGA Republicans and make sure that voters know that it is our nation's fundamental ideals that are at stake in the next election. Here's more from that ad. Please, I didn't do anything wrong. It was a miscarriage. It's for the courts to decide, man. Wrong is wrong, but what can you do? They want you to think slavery was all bad, but slaves learned valuable skills, like being a blacksmith. That's racist and a lie. It's in the school curriculum, endorsed by our fine governor. It's ridiculous. Oh, what are you doing? Let's go. Let's go with me. <laughs> Politicians who lie are manipulating you so they can gain or maintain power, turning families and friends against each other and often leading to violence. Surely you have to do something about that, don't you? Because if you keep kicking the can down the road, eventually, you run out of road. Jews will not replace us! One people, one nation, and immigration, one soil! Banning books, seeking to overturn elections, attempting to erase parts of our history, taking away and criminalizing women's health care. These actions by the MAGA movement, the Republicans, can only be described as fascism. Mission Democracy argues a threat they say is no longer a foreign threat, and one we see just today splashed across the front page of today's Kansas City Star. As a Republican candidate for governor of Missouri is vowing, is running on a promise to burn books. The Star reports that this vow from State Senator Bill Eigel came after he was criticized for a video showing him burning cardboard boxes. He said this, quote, in the video, I am taking a flamethrower to cardboard boxes, representing what I am going to do to the leftist policies and rhino corruption of the Jeff City swamp. But let's be clear, you bring those woke pornographic books to Missouri schools to try to brainwash our kids, and I'll burn those two on the front lawn of the governor's mansion, end quote. So we start the hour with some of our favorite experts and friends. Democratic strategist, pollster, and founder of Brilliant Corners Research, Cornell Belcher is here. Miles Taylor is still with us. With me at the table, host of Fast Politics podcast and Vanity Fair special correspondent, Molly Jong Fast is back. And U.S. special correspondent for BBC Studios and MSNBC contributor, Katty Kay is here. Uh, Cornell, I'm going to start with you. Um, this ad was made by a... Coalition. I don't think they'll be insulted if I if I call it sort of a motley crew of effective messengers, of um, important voices from across the. I think the ideological spectrum is a relic, so I won't say that it applies today. But people that used to maybe find themselves on opposite in, in different parties, and our understanding from talking to Joe Walsh is that it's an effort to publicly call out the MAGA movement as fascist, and that using that word is very deliberate. What do you think? I think that this is an important ad, and and, and I was funny because I was watching this 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 ad actually earlier this morning before I got on a, a, a plane, so I was watching focus groups, and I think this ad is important because uh, Nicola is something that I think we brought up before here because I think it does uh, raise the stakes for the, those middle those middle American uh, voters out there, right? And it is we've talked about this before. You know, democracy can't just be something that's important and what black and brown people want to hold on to is right. You know, we need middle of the road white Americans to have skin in this game for them to say, oh, wait a minute, if democracy is under attack and if fascism be becomes a thing, it doesn't just hurt those people. I'm a part of this as well, and I have skin in this game. I love this ad because I think it does raise the stakes for middle America 
who, let's be truthful, they have been kicking the can down the road, and it puts a consequence to kicking the can down the road in a really important way. I mean, Cornell, if you looked at all the cans in America, they all have Republican shoe prints on them at this point. It's what they've done for eight <laughs> years. I, I want to just push you, though, on the politics of this, because one of the things that I think is important to connect to is that Republicans can come back when their party doesn't represent the toolkits used by the world's most vicious autocrats. But being against health care for trans families and making them think they're not safe is different from wanting to debate appropriate ages for medicine or, or health. You know, I mean, there, these are some complicated issues that the MAGA movement has made so authoritarian. And I think the, 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 the right to vote fits in here, too. I mean, in, in, in this ad, they seem to be taking things that are real and putting them together in ways that Republicans can do very brutally and saying a vote for the MAGA candidate is a vote for book bans, for division as our new normal, for uh, abortion being criminalized. I mean, that, that clip about abortion was a woman saying she had a miscarriage. She's being hauled off by law enforcement. That is where some Republicans want to take abortion policy in this country. And I think it, it falls, it is the obligation of former Republicans to tell the truth to their neighbors about how dangerous this version of the Republican Party is. Well, I, again, I think it's it's important. There's, it's not about two. It's not about two parties with two different ideological agendas, right? It's not a, a party about what you know. Do you believe in 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 free markets versus you know some government regulation? No, this the election that we're having is coming up is really about do you believe in democracy or do you are you cool with authoritarianism? And I think that that's that are that's those are the stakes. And those have to be the stakes that that they understand. And again, it, it MAGA Republicanism. You know, if you're, it's almost if you're voting for Republicans right now, you are embracing that other side of that coin, which is which is anti-democracy. I mean, look, I, I just came from North Carolina, and, and voters down there are talking about. You know, they're stripping the governor of of his of of what has been. The governor's rights for a long time, the, re the Republican legislator, and they're stripping him even of his rights to, to appoint people uh, to the electoral uh, board and sort of overlook elections, right? This is power going out of control. And at some point, it's not partisan, Nicole, and we got to make more middle Americans understand this isn't about partisanship. This is about democracy or no democracy. Yeah, and I think, Miles, this added burden um, that I feel Republicans have in articulating the danger and the threat is, is around what, what Cornell's talking about. It is, it is making clear what Liz Cheney made clear before the midterms, when she went out and endorsed Democratic candidates, that it wasn't enough to simply call out Donald Trump and his enablers. You have to go out and help Democrats win elections. And I wonder where you are in that process. Yeah, I mean, it's what I would call coalition campaigning. And we're in one of those moments where right now it's not, are conservative issues going to prevail over, over issues that liberals care about? It's whether the foundations of our democracy are going to survive. And those are the moments where you put country over party, you work with the other side, you support people who actually embrace those tenants. I mean, look at the things we're hearing out there on the campaign trail already about burning books and don't say gay and nullifying elections and design, you know, denying the results of elections and, you know, replacing duly elected officials and suppressing dissent and censoring speech. I mean, it's, it's pretty shocking stuff, the type of things you hear in authoritarian regimes. You don't normally imagine that it could happen here, but it is happening here. And there was a moment the other week, Nicole, that was jarring for me. I'm teaching a class right now on the future of conservatism, and it's a really interesting moment to be teaching that class. And we've brought in some of the top conservative voices in the country. And I've asked each of them what they want to see happen in the coming years with the Republican Party to reframe it on conservative issues. And I've expected to hear things like tax reform or balanced budgets or whatever, two very prominent speakers, one, the leader of a major conservative publication, and one, a very senior Republican, said their biggest concern was anti-constitutionalism. 
anti-constitutionalism, not that the Republican Party had veered away from key issues, but that it was veering towards opposing the founding social contract of this country itself. That's how serious the moment uh, we're in actually is, is that Republicans uh, with a conscience, the handful that are left in the upper ranks of the party and of the conservative movement are saying they're worried that this is a party that's turning against the Constitution itself. So that's what we're up against. And that's why people like Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger and others have embraced this concept of coalition campaigning. Now is a moment to put those partisan divisions aside, work across the aisle, and actually get people who support the Constitution and democratic institutions elected to office and get MAGA types who don't out of office.